Section 3.5, Empirical Formulas from Analyses. So in this section, we're going to be looking at two types of formulas, an empirical formula and a molecular formula. I've mentioned this in the past, so it may be review, I hope. Um, if you were to have a, a sugar molecule, a sucrose molecule, uh, C6H12O6, that is the actual number of elements or and number of elements and and ratio of elements in the sugar molecule there's six carbons 12 hydrogens six oxygens the molecular formula is c6h12o6 so that's the formula of the molecule but often when you figure out what's in a something you can't automatically go to c6h12o2 instead you find the empirical formula which is just the smallest ratio, smallest whole number ratio of the atom. So if I divide 6 into 6, 12, and 6, I get C1H2O1. So your empirical formula is just the smallest ratio. Then from the empirical formula, a little more uh, study, and you could easily derive the molecular formula. So that's what you're doing in this, in this section. Uh, you'll use the multiple um, in order, so the multiple here would be 6, so 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12, 1 times 6 is 6, and you find your mul multiple if you're given the molar mass. If you know how much the entire um, molecule weighs per mole, then I can easily uh, find the difference between an empirical and a molecular formula. It'll make sense once we do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the percentage of elements. So they're going to say in a certain sample, you're going to have so many percent this, so much percent that. And you're going to take the percentage and assume a 100 uh, gram sample. That way the percentage can su simply turn into grams. If I have 83% carbon, I would say 83 grams of carbon out of 100. That way I don't have to change my numbers. It's almost like stealing a little bit. It's easy. Once I have grams, I go through the periodic table, and if you know what that means, I've used it before, it means divide by the molar mass. So remember, water was 18 grams per mole. So if I have a certain number of grams of water, divide by 18 grams, and now I'm in moles. Once I'm in moles, I can configure out the empirical formula. Moles are numbers. So if it's a one, like water, is two to one ratio. Well, if I know that it's two moles to one mole, then I can, I can say, oh, it's a two to one relationship. If I know the number of moles to the number of moles, then I know the formula. And that's how I can derive the, the empirical formula. So let's try one and see how to do it. So here's an example. The compound para-aminobenzoic acid, uh, PABA on sunscreen, is composed of 61% uh, carbon, 5.14% hydrogen, 10.21% nitrogen, 23.33% oxygen. Find the empirical formula. Well, not very nice uh, opening question, I don't think, but we'll see what we can do. I'm just going to write. Um, I'm just going to write this down as percentages first. So I'm going to have sixty-one point three one percent. That's carbon, and then hydrogen is five point one four percent. Then nitrogen. It's 10.21%, and then oxygen is 23.33%. So I'm going to assume 100 grams, and that turns this into 61.31 grams of carbon, 5.14 grams of hydrogen, 10.21 grams of nitrogen and 23.33 grams of oxygen. So if I want to know the formula 
which is a ratio. So ratio of water, two atoms to one atom. I need a two to one relationship in water. Well, if I need, and if I wanted to do that, I have to have numbers. And weights is not a number because everything has different sizes. So the weights of all these things are not apples to apples. I want numbers. In order to get numbers, I need moles. Mole is a number. It's a really big number, but it's still a number. It's like one to one or one to two or one to five, only it's one zillion, billion, zillion to, to one or two. All right, so if I go to moles, then I can get a ratio. Well, I get moles by dividing by the molar mass. So the molar mass of carbon, if I look at the periodic table and I look at that number, I've got 12.01 grams per mole. Hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole. Nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. And oxygen is 16 grams per mole. Okay, so 61.31 divided by 12.01. Now grams will cancel. Grams cancel. Grams cancel. Grams cancel. Now I'm in moles. All right, so 61.31 divided by 12.01 equals 5.105 moles of carbon, 5.09 moles of hydrogen, 0.7288 moles of nitrogen, and 1.456 moles of of oxygen. Now I'm in numbers. This is saying 5.1 to 509 to 0.72 to 1.4. So it's it's like so many dozen to so many dozen to so many dozen. So these are numbers. So I can compare these numbers and from these numbers get a formula. What to do next? I'm going to change colors. What, what to do next is to divide this number by the smallest of these numbers. And then everything else is a multiple. Okay, so um, if whatever whatever is the smallest here is 0.72, if I can divide in, 0.72 into 0.72, well, 0 0.72, 88, divided by 0.7288 is 1. You see what I've done? Now I've made whole numbers. And now those whole numbers can be the ratio that I use to do my empirical formula. Well, if I do that for itself, I have to do that for all of it. So, and I'm going to round a little bit, fudge just a little bit. 5.105 divided by 0.7288. Okay. Is. So the 5.05 times 0.7288 is 7.005. I'm just going to fudge that to 7. Okay, it's close enough because we've rounded anyway. So 5.09 divided by 0.7288 is going to be 6.984. I'm going to round that to 7. 6.98, that's 7. 7.005, that's 7, okay? And then the last one, 1.456 over 0.7288 is 2.001, well, that's 2. Now I have a 7 to 7 to 1 to 2. That's my empirical formula. So I look over here and say, okay, this first one's carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. So... This is going to be carbon, and then I go and see it. That's a 7. And then hydrogen, that's a 7. Nitrogen, that's a 1, so I don't do anything. Oxygen, that's a 2. So this is my empirical formula.
and empirical comes from the word that I did an experiment to find it. So the empirical formula is my smallest ratio that I did just from my from this type of a problem. Uh, I couldn't know what the actual molecule is unless you give me its molar mass. If you can give me its molar mass, then I can take that and turn that into a molecular formula. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a little bug, I think. S uh, seven carbons are black here. Uh, then the oxygens are red. The hydrogens are white. And the nitrogen here is blue. So this is, I don't know, some kind of a pentane, I think it is. Some kind of a pentane amine. have no idea. So we've seen empirical formulas. The empirical formula is the smallest whole number, and you can do that by an analysis of percent composition. Now let's go back to the molecular. A molecular formula is the actual formula, the formula of the molecule. And you can get it from the empirical formula if you know the molecular mass. If you know the mass of a whole molecule, you take the molecule, the mass of the whole molecule, divide by the mass of what you saw with the empirical one, and then you get the multiple. That multiple is then multiplied by every one of the subscripts to get the molecular mass. So remember the number of atoms in a molecular formula is a multiple of the number of atoms in the empirical formula. Sometimes they're the same, like H2O. H2O is an empirical formula because it's the lowest ratio, and it happens to be the molecule also. But there's plenty of other examples of molecules that the molecular formula is different from the empirical formula. So here's a little bit of an easier example. They, they did a, a problem just like we did with the empirical formula, and they found the empirical formula was C1H1, which is CH. And they're going to tell us the molar mass of this molecule. Okay, so they'll say it's 78 grams per mole. And then they're going to say, what is the molecular formula? Well, I need to know what the formula of my empirical is. So I see one carbon and one hydrogen. So that's 1 times 12 equals 12. 1 times 1 equals 1. That's 13. So my, my empirical formula weighs 13. The real molecule weighs 78. And you know that it's a multiple of 13. So how many times does 13 go into 78? That'll give me my multiple. So 78 divided by 13 is going to be exactly 6. All right, so now that I know the multiple, I take this, this number and multiply by 6, and this number and multiply by 6, and I have the molecular formula of C6H6. So that is, you start with the empirical, CH, you find out what its mass is, in this case 13, they give you the molecular mass of the material. You have to, otherwise I can't do it. And if they give it to you, then I simply say, how many times does 13 go into 78? In this case, 6. Take your empirical formula and multiply every, mole, every atom in it by 6. Or whatever multiple that you're given. Lastly, I want to mention combustion analysis. Um, in order to find out how much the percent was, like you were given it's 50% of this and 12% of that, uh, normally they use a big machine at some kind of a lab uh, to burn something. So they burn something in oxygen. That's why the oxygen is coming in the sample. And then there is a, a filter that filters out certain things that you don't want. So, for instance, whatever is in the sample that would be producing hydrogen, would be absorbed in the H2O absorber. And then whatever would, would uh, whatever carbon compound would go out would be absorbed in the, in the CO2 absorber. So the carbon is determined from the mass. So what happens is that goes into the absorber and now the whole absorber weighs more. But it has to be carbon that's being absorbed because it's, it's specific to carbon. It only absorbs carbon. So the, the weight of that whole little gadget, that whole little plastic thing with the, with the dust in it, gets heavier. They weigh it. They find out what's the change in weight. And then that's the amount of carbon. 
uh, the hydrogen went into the water. So that little that little plastic thing, they weigh it, whatever the increase in weight must have been hydrogen. And so that's how they figure it out. They weigh something and then they find out the percentages of the weights at the end. That's how they know that a material is so many percent or so many percent. It's, it's, it's called combustion analysis. We'll never do it because I'm sure it costs a billion dollars.